Thank God it's Monday. We are restarting all of our videos that we're doing right after the sermon on Monday to give you a tool to apply yesterday's sermon to every day of your week. Now, yesterday, uh, Severin preached this amazing sermon on being somebody who shares his story of Jesus, sharing the gospel. First of all, he answered the question, well, why? Well, because Jesus wanted this, right? He he, shed, he, was, he came to this world to share the good news that God loves people and he wants them to be in a relationship with them through the sacrifice of, of Jesus. And then secondly, um, who or what is the gospel? Well, the gospel is the person of Jesus. It's not a belief system. It's not a set of moral values. It's actually a relationship with God through Jesus. And number three, what's the driving force? Well, it starts with compassion. I, I thought that is my takeaway for me personally. Where is my compassion for people who don't know God? Because I, I, I can get very compassionate about people in the church, right? Oh, they need help. We need to you know, look after the people who want to be in church. But there's people outside of church that don't know God. And what, what a lost mess that this world has. And I need to grow in my compassion for them. Okay. Here's the practical takeaway. Very simply, learn how to share your testimony. It's in, in three steps. It's very simple. This is what Severin said. And the template is out of the way Paul normally shares his story in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, uh, you can read this in chapter 22. That's one of the occurrences. Paul has to defend his faith. He doesn't do it by, by logic and arguments. He just simply shares his story. Now, this is how he shares his story. Number one, who I was before Jesus. Number two, how did he meet me? And how, what did it change, right? And number three, it's what is he doing right now in my life? Let me go through those steps with Paul and then I'll share my testimony because mine is vastly different than the one of Paul. Now, Paul in Acts 22 says, uh, first in, in verse 3, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Sicily, brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, as all of you are this day. I persecuted the Christians to the death, binding and delivered to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can be, bear me witness. From them I received letters to the brothers in, uh, and I journeyed towards Damascus to take those who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. What does he say? He says, I was zealous for God. I wanted to be the best follower of him. I was so religiously, uh, I was basically a jihadist for, for Judaism. And I wanted to kill people and bring them to jail because they believed the wrong thing, in my opinion. And he's saying, I am just like you, right? He's relating to the people. Now, this is not your story. Neither it is mine. Then he says, as I was on the way, suddenly a bright light shone on me and I heard the voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he's sharing the number two step. What did, how did God intervene? How did he meet me? And he shares how, how he, he gets completely transformed from this man who persecutes the way, the church, to the person who wants to follow Jesus dearly because he realizes that in him is, is salvation, in him is righteousness. And then he, he shares uh, around verse 17, he says, you know, uh, that he, he was returning to the temple, returning to Jerusalem, and then he meets God again. And God says that, um, you know, they will not accept your testimony, but go quickly. And all of this is so real because it's not like, um, as, as a listener, you would be thinking, well, if God tells him that they were not listened, why is he going? Well, he's still following this Jesus. And so it's not a story of success or it's not a story of now my, all my problems are gone. It's just a real story answering those three questions, who I was before Jesus, how he met me, and what is he doing in my life right now? So let me share that in, in my case, because um, I grew up as a Christian culturally, right? So I can't share how I was a persecutor of the Christians or how I was riding on a donkey to Damascus. Neither can you. But here's the story. So I grew up as a, as a son of ministers in Peru, 
of missionaries. And I heard so much about God, but I did not know God. To me, it was all foreign until one day at Sunday school, one of the Sunday school teachers said, who wants to become a friend of Jesus? And to me, in my childish uh, thinking, my, my, you know, like I, I thought, like, yes, I want to be a friend of God. Why not? I became a friend of Jesus that day, and I did so by inviting him into my life. Now, something weird happened. I was a very imaginative child, and I was dreading sleep, because in sleep I would have the weirdest of nightmares. I, they, they were somehow uh, possessed by me being uh, eaten alive. The say, I had names for the monsters who were part of my dreams. Um, and I did not like to sleep because of that, right? That night, I slept through and I didn't remember any nightmares for years. For years, I did only have great dreams. Something in the deep fabric of me had changed because God had met me in, on a deep, deep level that I could not understand. Later on, I would discover what it means to follow Jesus more and more, and so I'm maturing. Now, what is God doing in my life right now? I feel he's dealing with fear again right? Sometimes fear is less this scare thing. It's more this worry thing as, as somebody who's in responsibility, looking after the church, looking after my kids, looking after my wife, looking after many, many things. I sometimes get a bit worried when things don't go as planned. And I realize, well, maybe it's time again to invite Jesus into that circumstance. And I found the best way to deal with fear is actually not battling it, you know, like, oh, I'm not afraid, you know, I'm buckling up and things like that. It's actually handing your fears to God and saying, come into my life again. And so this is my story. This is my testimony. If I would share that with somebody who doesn't believe it, I would ask the question, how do you deal with your fears? And then get it into conversation and, and see how, where it takes me. Okay. As a connect group meeting tonight or today, why don't you take time, turn, and share? Who were you before Jesus? How did he meet you? What is he doing in your life right now? God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.